So that it could give life and hope and love. Over 2,000 years ago, the Holy Spirit broke through. It broke through the lives of this group who still saw themselves as being Jewish, but yet the, the, it was something that broke into their lives that gave birth to the church, the body of Christ. And so we celebrate that today. And so let us celebrate it with our breakthrough prayer. And you will find it up on the screen. And I wanted to say this breakthrough prayer in one voice. Almighty, loving, and powerful God, we know that you are with us and you are for us. We are listening for your breakthrough into our lives. Reveal to us where your spirit is leading us as a church and as your people. Give us the faith and the courage to step through the doors you open that will lead us far beyond all that we can ask or imagine. Amen. And let us turn to our neighbor and let us welcome one another with the peace of Christ.
After we have an opportunity to give a few hugs, welcome one another with the peace of Christ. We are going to be blessed with the hearing from our chancel choir as they share their gift of song with all of you. <laughs> I was too busy saying hello to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> <coughs>
And so what we do is take a moment and just invite you, anyone, if they have a breakthrough moment, a God breakthrough moment that you've experienced in your life this past week, any breakthroughs? Yes, go ahead. I got to hear my granddaughter sing. She sang like an angel. Oh, amen. <laughs> amen. That's a breakthrough moment. And we have a lot of breakthrough moments that were our leaves that are written that are put on the tree of life that we have in the John Wesley room. So if any of you have experienced a God breakthrough moment in your life, uh, over the past week or over the past month or even today, please write it down. It's a way of sharing what God is doing in your life. And I know that uh, I look at what we're doing here at Face First United Methodist Church, and I've talked to many of you. And God is having his breakthrough moments within each and every one of you. And that's what we celebrate. And so we want to come together now and um, have this time of prayer. It's not only Pentecost Sunday, it is Memorial Day. It's a time in which, of course, we remember those men and women who have served, who have given that last uh, measure of devotion. Last week, they had the Vietnam uh, Memorial, the traveling one, and it was truly moving. Did, how many of you have had, ch had a chance to see that? Powerful. And it is a stark reminder of those who served their country and didn't come home. And we continually pray for their families, honor their service. And uh, we find whatever ways within our own personal lives that we can give homage to those men and women who serve. But this is also a special time in which we remember those who have finished their course in faith and rest from their labor. And we normally honor, and what we do is to honor those who have passed on uh, All Saints Day, and we will do that. But I want to invite you to please raise your hand if you lost somebody very close and dear to you this past year. Many of us have. And uh, had a chance to talk to the family American Marilyn Horton. It was one year ago that she passed away. And our hearts are with you. She was a good and faithful servant, not only to Christ, but she was such an integral part of this faith community. And we want to honor her. And I think uh, Sandy passed away this past year, didn't she? So we honor Sandy then he. I, I don't want to miss anybody. Anybody else was good that had their names? Yes. Oh, and, and Ruth Anderson passed away. Yes. Cindy Pitts. How can we forget? Who? Norma Frankenberg. Norma Frankenberg. And Linda Zimmerman. And Linda Zimmerman. Pardon? Evelyn Henning. Evelyn Henning. Anyone else? It's been a rough year for us as a church because we've lost so many dear members, but foundational members of our church. But we know that they are singing praises with God. They rest from their labor, and as our liturgy tells us, their needs do follow them. And I know you have personal loved ones and friends who have passed. And so in our prayer, we're going to honor everyone. And knowing that they left the legacy for each and every one of you, and they left the legacy for this church, that will always continue. We also want to pray for those 
who could not be here due to illness. We want to pray for Joe Egan. Um, we want to pray for Scott Nelson, who's battling cancer. <laughs> Are there any other special prayer requests? Yes. yes okay. We pray for Jan Torbison. Pray for her healing. I would like to ask a special prayer. Uh, my uh, nephew, and the baby would be my, my great nephew. Um, there was a, a tragedy in which uh, Bonnie, my nephew's wife, suffered a major complication, and the baby is fighting for its life. His name is Jack, Jack Strasalka. Pray for him, little one, and pray for the family. Um, it came out of the blue, it wasn't anticipated. But we put them in God's hands. As we put those who we love in the hands of God, and for those of you who are watching with us online, we know that there are many people that you love and care for that are in need of God's touch, as we all are in need of that touch. But we also, too, want to praise God and give God thanks for this day. Just look around and you see the blessings that God has given you. And we also want to cherish those blessings and never take them for granted. So let us come together now as we pray, lifting up these names, lifting up those saints who have gone before, and to lift up our lives that the God will use us through the Holy Spirit do great and wonderful things to bring healing and hope to this world. Let us pray together. Precious God, in the quiet places of our hearts, in those quiet rooms in which we go to pray, we offer ourselves fully to you and to the work of your Holy Spirit within our lives. We pray, God, that you would do your good work, that you would bring healing and hope, that you will honor, God, those who have given their last full measure of devotion, that you will celebrate the lives of the saints that have come before. Dear God, we ask that you will hear our prayers, the petitions of our hearts, that you will embrace, God, our hopes and dreams and allow us to be the people in the church that you have called us to be. We all come with our brokenness. We all come with our hurts, sorrows, and doubts. But we ask you, God, to please cradle us in your arms of grace and mercy and offer that peace that surpasses all understanding. For we know that you are a God of love. Even as we live in this broken world, we know, God, that you offer your grace in times of all trial and joys in times of celebration. So hear our prayers and our petitions as we come now to share the prayer that you taught us the world to pray in this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we have forgiven those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us, Lord, from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. If I could send a letter to the world, who left this world a few short years ago? I'd ask him how he's doing, and if he's feeling well. But there's some things I could like to know. Have you walked along the chain? Rest today, the world is going to 
And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every people under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? <clears throat> Parthians, Medians, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytics, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you so much, Dixie. This morning, yeah, uh, it's on. This morning, I'm going to give you uh, a little lesson in Latin. Vine Sancte Spiritus. Now, Vine means to come. Sancte means holy. That's where we get the word sanctuary from. And spiritus means spirit. I think we could guess, guess that. Latin has been the liturgical language for the earlier part of our church and still is in some of our other Christian denominations. And I believe one of the most few beautiful phrases in this liturgical language is found in Vine Sancte Spiritus. Come, Holy Spirit. It is an invitation it's an invitation to invite God's Spirit into our lives. In short, when we open our hearts to the flow, to the wind of the Spirit of God, each of us becomes transformed. We are really a new creation. And this is the purpose and the role of the Holy Spirit within our lives. To allow us to become more than we are. The New Testament theologian N.T. Wright says this, Those in whom the Spirit comes to live are God's new temple. They are individually and corporately places where heaven and earth meet. So today we are celebrating Pentecost. That day when the disciples gathered together in the season or the celebration of Pentecost, 50 days 
after Passover. And there they gathered. They were praying. And all of a sudden, as Lori demonstrated, this rush of mighty wind comes blowing through the place. You kind of think of something like that happening in a horror movie. We're all of a sudden, we're sitting there, and all of a sudden, the doors blow open, the windows blow open, and there's wind that fills the room. And as the wind was blowing, and that's a very important symbol here, because again, wind or breath also means spirit. So as the spirit, as the wind was blowing, flames of fire seemed to be over the heads of those being baptized with the Holy Spirit, and they were speaking in other tongues. And as the scripture says, as the spirit gave them utterance, and the people were amazed. They were hearing their own language. And one interesting thing, they said, well, aren't these Galileans? Now, Galileans had a really, really thick accent. Galileans were your country bumpkins that came from the hills of Tennessee. <laughs> And I love the hills of Tennessee. But for the most part, these disciples were uneducated. A few were, but for the most part they weren't. They were fishermen. Some were, were menial workers. So they weren't heavily educated in the classics. Now they probably spoke a couple languages, they probably spoke Greek because that was the international language. But they spoke their own Arabic with a very thick accent. It was very difficult, I think, to imagine that scene. Where all of a sudden these individuals coming from Galilee these people who were Jews from all over the empire, all over the region, they were hearing their language being spoken, and they understood what was being said. And what was being said were praises offered to God. They were amazed. But then some thought, well, maybe they're just drunk. Now, I doubt if any of us can, can get drunk and start speaking in fluent Korean. Maybe fluent Uber, but not fluent Korean. Or... Latin. You see, people came from all over the area with their own language, and they heard the word of God spoken by these groups of individuals who were filled with the Spirit of God. Now, when Paul Peter started to hear that, well, when these people are drunk, and you know what Peter's response was? They're not drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. Usually if you're drunk, it'll be in the evening. You see, something miraculous happened and the people there were trying to make some sense out of it. So Peter, at that moment in time, preached the gospel. And as they listened to the gospel, it says 
that 3,000 people were added to the church. 3,000. Maybe this was the first revival meeting. But 3,000 people were filled also with the Spirit of God in which they were transformed and changed and made again into a new creation. So what does that say about us? Are we to come down before the altar like our Pentecostal brothers and sisters and start speaking in tongues? No. Paul actually tells us that there are many gifts to the Holy Spirit. Tongues is really one of the least of these. But there is the spirit of teaching. There is the spirit of serving. There is a spirit of grace. There is a spirit of hospitality. There is a spirit of preaching. You see, the list can go on. It's the qualities that, that come and come from the Spirit of God that allows us to be instruments of the peace and the love of Jesus Christ into our world. That's what we're called to do as a church. That's why this Pentecost is so important for us because it reminds us of our calling to be more than we are. But there's a tendency in the church to minimize the role of the Holy Spirit. We kind of want to say, okay, well, we'd like to keep our church calm and quiet. You can tell that sometimes you're in a church that, I'm not saying that the Holy Spirit isn't there, but they're, they're afraid to tap into it. And so when we sing a rousing song, and they like, when the row is called up yonder, when the row is called up yonder. God, is there any spirit in that? Have any of you ever seen a African American service or been part of one? You should be very grateful. They could, the pre preacher could go on for about an hour and a half. And if you're not doing so good, the you know the congregation helps you and say, "Okay, now you can do better, Pastor. Come on, come on." You see, the Spirit of God doesn't put on constraints. Okay, the Spirit of God opens our heart up to the love of God. And when you're filled with the love of God, you can't hold back. Something happens inside of you. That's one of the things I love about people who are in part of the 12 step program is when they come to that place where they let go and then finally let God, there is something exciting that happens in their hearts and lives and they share it amongst one another. And then they have a chance to share it with others, they would. Because something happened and changed in their life. And we have to ask that question to ourselves. Has something exciting changed in our own life? Or do you want something exciting to happen in yours? God does wonderful things. God does incredible things if we allow God to work with his spirit within each and every one of us. So we should never minimize the work of the Holy Spirit because the work of the Holy Spirit is the work of God. As Methodists and as many Christians, we believe God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is still one, God is still God, but there are three aspects about the nature of God that we need to incorporate into our hearts and lives, and the Holy Spirit is one way that we can do that. So, what's missing? 
What power is left in the life of this church that we need to reclaim? What power is missing in your life? Because it's the Holy Spirit that empowers us to do God's work in the world. Sometimes we look at the challenges of our age. And I mean there's a lot of challenges. And oftentimes we say to ourselves, we just can't do it. And the truth is we can't. I think the biggest reason for that is we always try to do it on our own, but by our own devices, by our own power, by our own resources. We want to tackle all these problems and struggles we might be going through in our lives, or we see the struggles in our world, and we try to do it on our own. And every time, and I'm so guilty of this, and if you want to know how guilty I am, you see me in my office, I'll tell you. But I always try, first and foremost, I'll do it on on, you know, on my own. I'm the captain of my own ship. When in reality, I don't always have that control. And sometimes I need that power greater than myself to restore me to that wholeness again. To restore me to sanity. To restore me to hope. I know that the pandemic still affects us in some way or another. And we have to ask ourselves, how can we move on? Because I'm still afraid, I'm still hurting, broken inside. I still have loved ones who were sick and some loved ones who have died. And we ask ourselves, how can I go on? Well, you know, you need a spirit of God in you to help you to grow and to sustain. Because if not, how can we go on? Same happens when we lose a love. When we lose someone that we love and has been close to our hearts. As we remember them on this Memorial Day, there's a part of us saying, I can't go on. I know that feeling when my mom passed away a couple years ago. Um, yeah, there was a piece of me that almost seemed like died, that died with her. And you ask, how can I carry on? And the only way that I could allow myself to carry on where I could be my fullest self was to say, God, here I am. Let your Holy Spirit work in me. I remember my last visit with Marilyn Norton. Uh, it was just after, not soon, it was, it was soon after my mom passed away. And there was something that came to me to ask Marilyn. I, and I believe it to my heart's core, and I believe this was the Holy Spirit speaking to me to help me. And I said, Marilyn, I want to ask you, when you get to heaven, see, say hi to my mom. And she said, I will. The Holy Spirit worked in a very interesting way. But knowing having that encounter with Marilyn meant a great deal. You see, the power of the Holy Spirit is also there to bring healing to your heart. Because there are times when you feel like you can't go on. But we can't, because it's the Spirit of God lifting us up and raising us up to become a new creation, to bring hope. Again, I know that many of you have lost loved ones, and we grieve too, still as a church. But we know that the Holy Spirit gives us that reassurance, not only that we will meet them again, that we can take their legacy and carry it on. The Holy Spirit also elevates us to 
to become a person of integrity? Because there are times in which we say we cannot do this, but the Holy Spirit gives us the power to do that. So if I ever ask any of you to preach one Sunday, because we like to do that in the Methodist Church, get lay people to preach. If you say, oh, I can't do that, I can't get up in front of people, oh, just trust in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will allow you to do things you thought you could never do. <laughs> this is why this day is so sacred to us. It's because we are reminded of the power of God to transform and to change, to set the world on fire, to set our hearts on fire, that we can truly live as a disciple of Jesus Christ, that we have nothing to fear, God will give us away. Jesus, when he sent his disciples out, there were 120 of them. Because Jesus had a lot of disciples. And they gathered. And Jesus said to them before he ascended into heaven, Lo, I am with you, even to the end of the age. And it was that Holy Spirit that sent out these few disciples to transform the world. And that same spirit can transform you. Let us pray today. Loving the Holy God, we really want to give great uh, praise and thanks for your spirit that we invite into our hearts. We need Santa Spirit to come Holy Spirit and fill our hearts that we can truly live a life you have called us to live, and that we can live a life on a prayer. And for our closing blessing, we will have, excuse me, choir sing with us uh, a song of praise.
And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of God's Holy Spirit be with you and keep you and bless you this day, now and forevermore, world without end. Amen. Go in peace.